It was an interesting weekend, obviously, with the conference tournament, and um, we took Monday off. We played six games in five days, so we actually had met up to uh, watch the selection show, kind of surprised by the field. I think ever kind of caught a lot of people off guard, but uh, obviously a really good field, and we're excited about having uh, Ryder and uh, Alabama, North Carolina State. Anytime you can um, get a conference tournament champion and an SEC team, ACC team into your into your field at, at your own park, uh, it's, you know it's going to be a good one. So expect uh, really good baseball this uh, weekend and excited about it. And came out Tuesday and uh, had a pretty good practice and Wednesday as well. And then uh, had our practice earlier today. So um, just uh, kind of light, you know, our guys have played a lot of baseball. It's that time of year. You don't need to be pushing too hard. I, they've been through a lot and it was a, a long, long weekend with not a lot of sleep. So sometimes the best things rest and um, hopefully we got our feet back under us, our legs back under us and, and uh, we'll be ready to go tomorrow. It's, uh, I think the excitement's building around town and, and with our guys. I know with me, it's, it's been a lot of this and, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to get on the field. I'm ready for them to say play ball so we can just go play and coach and, and, and compete. And I know our guys are ready for it. And, um, you know, it's, it's still kind of hard to believe that uh, we're hosting a regional, but we are. And you see all the teams coming in today and practice, and I think it, it kind of settles in that uh, this is about to go down. So uh, we're five wins from Omaha, and so is everybody right now. And uh, it seems uh, like a long way away, but when you look at it that way, uh, it's not that much. So uh, hopefully we can play good Friday night and uh, we'll have Fincher going and in game one and he's the most rested and um, he's been our ace all year. So we're excited about him taking the bump and taking the ball in a historic game and uh, getting that winner's bracket hopefully and see what can happen. All right, Ben, go ahead. Coach, I, I think you've been a head coach for nine years now. Uh, I know it'll be your first NCAA regional as a head coach. Have you had time to think about that or reflect on it a little bit, or would that be something that's kind of down the road? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. Uh, that's a good question. It is. And, you know, you, you start thinking, man, are we ever going to get in one? And we've been close uh, since I've been here. I think we've been on the bubble every year and just didn't quite get it done or finish strong enough. And, uh, you know, I didn't have to sweat it on Monday. We knew we were in. Obviously, we got the – the word on Sunday night we were going to be a host site, so uh, you didn't have to wake up Monday sweating it with your heart rate up because you knew your name was going to get called, obviously, and that's a good thing. But, you know, honestly, I don't think, and I made a commitment to myself. Uh, I told Tyler this. I told the team this today when we met with them. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this, and uh, I hadn't enjoyed, honestly, the last few days because it's been a lot of a lot of talking, and uh, I like coaching and, and competing, and uh, I know this is part of the gig, but – uh, you know, it's been a lot of talking to a lot of different people uh, nonstop, and and uh, I kind of made a commitment yesterday morning. Look, I'm on or this morning. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy this. I want our players to enjoy it, win or lose. Uh, we're doing something special, and you need to realize that. Uh, go out, compete. I know they will. I know they're gonna compete their tails off, and they're not gonna back down from anybody. And I know that without a shadow of a doubt. But really want them. To, I don't want you to get into the middle of the summer and go, man. I wish I would have have taken it in, enjoyed that a little more, and. Uh, and again, we don't want this is starting something special. Hopefully, don't want to be a flash in the pan. Uh, we want to be a program that we're sitting here talking every year in June about uh, where we're playing and maybe even hosting. But uh, trying to enjoy it, and uh, you know, I, I think there's been so much going on, it's been hard too. But I, I think as we start getting closer to game day, I think you get more into enjoying uh, what this is all about. AJ. Lane, you mentioned how you prefer the coaching over the talking. And I mean, you just said how the attitude kind of shifts as you get closer to game day. What have you seen within the team as far as their attitude, dynamic and mentality as we get closer throughout the week? Yeah, I think they're, they're very loose still. Uh, you know, we got done with practice a while ago and they played the song and they all started jumping up and down. So I, that's what you want to see. Uh, from your team as you get closer to this you don't want to see them tight and uh, I've been I've been coach teams that uh, hosted for the first time I've seen it with my own eyes and they they play well all year and they get to that night and you see them like uh oh here it is and I don't think you're going to see that with our team they just they they're an older bunch uh they're they're very loose right now and I think this time of year teams you see playing well and, and advancing are teams obviously that are hot and are playing good but also teams that are 
are, are loose and having fun. It's, it's not the time to be tense and uptight. It's the time to, to, to cut it loose, let it rip, and, and go out and have a good time. So I, I felt good the last few days of practice. I just I felt like our, 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 everybody was in a good frame of mind. I, I feel like the vibe's good with our team, and, and they're remaining to stay loose. So it's, it's exciting to see. Hey, Lane, obviously uh, I've been fortunate enough to be on your program for a few years now. And I know in, 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 in some cases, uh, you know, you kind of been like, you know, I wish we could play the game tomorrow. It all has kind of the, I guess, the, the layoff and the build up to, to regional starting tomorrow. How has it been for not only for you as the coach, but guys, it, you know, I, I guess the angst of a team, uh, uh, would you sort of gauge that as the week of call? Yeah, you know, I think uh, we needed a little time. We needed to get our feet back under us. It was such a grind in the conference tournament, not just the games we played. They were stressful enough, but the lack of sleep. Uh, you guys know. Y'all covered it. It's uh, We're not getting I know you weren't either. You guys weren't getting into bed till you know, 3, 4 in the morning and having to get right back out there. You need to recover, and I think it took a lot out of us uh, mentally, physically, and it was good to take a day off and, and uh, let them enjoy the moment on Monday. Then we got back in the weight room Tuesday, and started practicing, and uh, I think it was probably one of those times where we needed some time. And uh, I, I feel like as we get closer, and it seems like it's flown by. Honestly, the week it just doesn't seem like it's taken forever. Is it ever going to get here? To me, it seems like it's flown by, and uh, I think it's just because so much has been going on and uh, talking to so many people, which is good. Look, you want to be talking to people. That's what I told somebody yesterday. You want to be talking to people right now because if you're not, uh, you're, they don't care what you're doing because you're not playing. So. Uh, this is a good thing, and I think that's made it move a little quicker. And uh, I just don't, I've not, I hadn't felt that built up of anxiety. I'm more of uh, it seems like it's kind of flown by, and just getting back out on the field, and and then here we are today. We're one day away, and uh, just feel good about uh, seeing the crowd. Can't wait to see what it looks like, and and what the vibe is going to be at the Love Shack. It's it's exciting. Chris. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Hey, hey, Coach, have you had a chance to study Ryder yet? What is Ryder all about? Are they a small ball team? Are they power hitting? What, what kind of pitchers do they have? What, what is Ryder? Well, they got a lefty going to Mar. He's very similar uh, physically to Fincher. They look a lot alike. Uh, he knows how to pitch. His numbers are good. And, and uh, they're a physical baseball team. They, uh, they get their swings off. And uh, I think it's more of a power-oriented uh, team and not, not as much small ball and and, uh, you know, one thing, as we have looked at their numbers, a few scouting reports and uh, on video, uh, one thing you do notice is they're playing loose, too. They're, uh, they're having fun. And anytime you see a team win their tournament, you know they're not pressing and you know they're, play they're hot and they're playing their best baseball. So we're catching a team that's playing really good. And, uh, you know, they're coming down here. They're in a regional. And, uh, you know, they're fired up about that. And, and uh we know we're going to get a great great ball game. They're going to bring it. The guy pitching is really good. He knows how to pitch. He's older. He's a lot like a lot of our guys, his fifth or sixth year in school, and uh, he's been through it. You know, he's a, he's a battle-tested uh, uh, veteran pitcher, and you know he's going to know what he's doing. He ain't going to get sped up, and, and uh, it'll, it'll be a good matchup. Excited. Excited about uh, – glad we're playing the second game because you kind of get to watch that first game, and – Maybe you guys get the jitters out a little bit, watching other teams play. Sometimes that happens, and uh, we know we're going to get their best shot. They're going to be ultra fired up and excited to be playing postseason baseball. AJ? Hey, Wayne, would you say that um, the time that you guys spent having to adapt, the word that you've used so much over the past couple of years, has maybe prepared you for times like this where it's unprecedented, the guys, you know, not knowing exactly um, how things are going to feel or how things are going to go in these um, big moments. Has the time where you guys have had to be at rest and high practicing or last year getting cut short, learning how to adapt, has that potentially helped you guys being able to handle these unprecedented moments? No doubt. I think that's a great point. Uh, we talk about it in our program, the ability to adapt. Adaptability is the word we use. Uh, it's, it's a cornerstone of our program, no matter what. Baseball players, you can throw softball too, they, we have to be adaptable. It's the one sport where uh, you, you can be playing two innings and it rains for two hours and they say go back there and play again. 
uh, you're, you're kind of at the mercy of, of, of a lot of people and the weather and different things. And, and uh, you can have a, a national championship on the line and it could be a five hour delay. And then they say, get out there and finish it. That don't happen in other sports. It happens in ours. So you have to have the ability to adapt. And we've actually had to use that more than ever the last two years. Uh, where's practice going to be? Uh, we can do this here at this time, but we're going to have to leave so they can practice, then come back over on this field. And it's just been a lot of moving parts. And there is no doubt it's helped us. It's created toughness. It's created character. Um, and I think it's showing right now. It's kind of, you know, we use the us against the world mentality. It's it's kind of who we are, and, and I like it. And uh, I think right now our guys are at that, they've kind of got that vibe, whatever, whatever. Just we're glad to be playing. We're glad to be hosting. And this bunch, I mean, I talk to them every day about, you, you know, you won't realize it till you're my age, what, you, what you've what you done. And uh, it, I, it really, it, I don't even think they realize what they are doing. It's just they're kind of just, we want to play ball. Just, uh, okay, we're in a regional, we're hosting, that's great. Everybody's fired up. Uh, let's have some fun and play baseball. And sometimes when you got that, that attitude, you can be dangerous. Hi, right, Chris. Hey, Coach, you, you saw Brody's article yesterday in The Athletic. What's it like being the most talked about team in college baseball, kind of being the it team in, in college baseball nationally, getting the exposure from, of course, everything that happened a couple of years ago to where you guys are now? Yeah, I mean, everybody wants good publicity. That, that never hurts. But more than just uh, our baseball team, I'm, I'm happy we're getting publicity for our, our university, our department, our university, our, our, our town. I mean, I'm just uh, – I couldn't be more – more fired up to uh, and giving our people something to cheer about, something to be happy about. If you saw the vibe in the Love Shack on Saturday and Sunday, I mean, you, if, if, you, if you're a Louisiana Tech fan or alumni and you see that and it doesn't fire you up, mm, something's wrong. So uh, just seeing people have a good time, have joy, have a smile on their face with all we've all been through from tornado to, to COVID and all the stuff every one of us have been through and have to deal with and, and adapt to, to see a a packed house out there jumping up and down and enjoying themselves. And to me, that means more than anything. And if it's bringing publicity to our town and our school, I love it. You, you can't have enough positive stuff said about uh, your, your, where you live and the place you work. So obviously uh, it, it's fun right now. We need to keep playing. And, and as long as we keep playing, we keep getting it. So uh, that's uh, you can't put a price tag on that when it comes to uh, getting that uh, for your school and your town. Corey, go ahead. I, mean, uh, I missed a small portion of your opening statement, so forgive me if you if you mentioned it during that. But have you guys completely decided on if you'll give the ball to Finch to start tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to start Fincher. Um, he will get the start tomorrow. A couple reasons why he's on full rest, and uh, he's been our ace all year. So, you know, I, you kind of look at their team. We're watching video and not sure that this guy may be a better matchup than this guy. But at the end of the day, I – if you overthink it, man, you can you can walk yourself right into a trap. I don't think this is the time of year to be overthinking things. And uh, we've had the same rotation all year, and Fincher is rested. And uh, even though he's pitched a lot and a lot of stressful innings, and uh, we rode him really hard, uh, he deserves a baseball. And uh, it's a historic game. And I, I, he can we kind of have a routine on Thursdays. I hit fungos, and Fincher catches up for me. That's kind of been the routine all year, just kind of our thing. And He'll come out of nowhere. If he sees me hitting fungos, he'll fly over there. And that's kind of his thing. And I was kind of messing with him about it being a historic game. And you sure you can deal with this? You sure you're good with it? He's laughing at me the whole time. So he'll be ready. He won't be sped up. And he deserves it to get the ball in uh, first ever regional we've ever hosted. So I'm proud of him. I mean, he'll be able to say this for the rest of his life, that uh, he threw the first pitch in the first uh, regional game we ever hosted at Louisiana Tech. For one or two more, go ahead, AJ. And going off of what um, you were talking about with the article from The Athletic, I know that it's such a redemptive story of where you guys were and where you've ended up. But a couple guys mentioned on Monday how they were not in this space to ask, why us? Why me? Why did this happen to them? And so it kind of gave the impression that it wasn't something that they thought about too much. They just went out there and did what they could. Is there an element of y'all that you know wants the tunnel vision of just focusing on what's ahead and is kind of for lack of a better term almost tired of focusing on the past and the hurdles that you guys had to get over to get to this point 
Yeah, you do. You kind of put blinders on, and you you, you have two choices when you're when you're facing adversity, and we were, and um, you know, you, you you put your head down, you go to work, or you quit. And I mean, and we're not quitting, and that was kind of the message to our team. My dad always taught me growing up, no matter how bad you got it, somebody's got it worse. So I don't want to hear you complaining. That's kind of uh, the, the, as I grew up, that's kind of how it was. I don't want to hear it because somebody's got it worse than you do. So uh, and those are your two options, and that's kind of what we told them from the get go. Look, we can work and we can get better no matter where we are, or you can quit. And that's that's really it. There's only two options. So our guys kind of put the blinders on and went to work. And I can't overstate how many times we pulled up to the ballpark. Cause, and it's probably because they didn't have a clubhouse and they didn't have a player's lounge. And there was nowhere to hang out. But, I mean, I'd go eat lunch, come back, and they're there. They got the machine set up. They're hitting every day, 11, 30, and 12. I'm like, my goodness, the whole team. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe us not having that place where they can go play video games or hang out or kick back and listen to music that and watch TV that – uh, may it force them into working because those are your only two choices work or don't and they chose to work and I think it, it no doubt it's helped us get to where we are create a character and toughness and I think it does I think you put those blinders on tunnel vision as you said and and uh, you just go to work you put your head down and you, you kind of live in the moment you don't look having what we dealt with you don't look too far ahead it's kind of like let's get through today and it kind of helps you stay in that moment and and, and deal with that process instead of looking too far ahead because we all drove around and saw the stadium. I mean, it would be like, ah, oh, is that thing going to be ready? Uh, didn't know if it was even going to be ready for games this year. Fortunately, it was. And uh, when there's weather and everything to deal with, everybody was working their tails off. So it, I think it most definitely helped us mentality to where we are today. One more. Anybody? Corey, go ahead. Lena, I know this group. Uh not just necessarily this year, but in, in seasons past, you know, they've been in, um, you know, pressure situations, been in big time moments. When, when do you as a coach, obviously, you, you know these guys on the playing field probably better than anybody. When do you know as you're watching them compete, when you see a moment and say, okay, they're, they're finally settled in, it's time for us to be who we are and go to work. Is there a particular moment in a game or is there a particular thing that you maybe look for that, that kind of lets you know as the coach that your guys are settled in or ready to go? Yeah, that's a good point point, a good question. I feel like, um, I said this the other day to somebody, I feel like if once our lineup has, we've been through it once and they've seen whoever's pitching, I feel pretty good about it. That uh, once our guys see it and everybody's watch nine hitters go to the plate, see what the guys got. I, Always get. I'm always excited about our second time through, our third time through, because I feel like once they see you once, they're older hitters and they've been through a lot. They'll be able to maybe get you and uh, be more on time and and be more uh, in more of a rhythm with the pitcher. And and uh, usually, you know, that first inning pitchers are all jacked up and and uh, you can tell if somebody like a Fincher's not throwing strikes, he's a little too amped up. But it's kind of like football. That first hit gets out of the way, or basketball. That first shot, uh, you kind of you see them kind of take the deep breath, but usually, Corey, it's when, after we've been through the lineup one time, I feel good about, okay, we can settle into the game now. All right, thanks a bunch, Lane. Uh, we'll, uh, Thank y'all, appreciate it. See you tomorrow. All righty. Thank you. Thanks,